Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege we have once again this morning to come to receive from your hand directly. We thank you for every brother here, for every sister here. We thank you because you've given everyone the victory already. And everyone will stand on top of their problems. Standing on top of their mountains, they'll be taller and higher than they were before. That the storms that have come to their lives as you give them your own victory. The victory of the cross and the victory of resurrection. I pray they'll become higher than all their enemies in Jesus' name. I pray, oh Lord, that this morning, authority and power will be communicated to every heart, to every soul here, so that, Lord, all the authority and all the power that is needed to function effectively in their ministries, anywhere you have placed them, you grant it unto them, and, Lord, you'll teach them how to exercise that authority to you in Jesus' name. I pray that your people will never be weak again. Your people will go from strength to strength. In the camp of the enemy, they'll be the victor. They'll be more than conquerors in every battle of life in Jesus' name. We have all seen together the downfall of Satan. And the defeat of Satan. And the routing of all his cause. And we have seen the victory of Jesus Christ. Make that a personal experience in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say good amen. amen. Sit down in your victory. Now, today we're looking at our authority and dominion in Christ. Our authority and dominion in Christ. As we talk about authority as well as dominion, I want to look at some practical things that will show you, that will reveal to you what right you have, what authority you have, what power you have, what dominion you have. When you know who you are, you will carry yourself, you will comport yourself according to who you are. I'm sure you've gone to secondary school, the majority of us, probably all of us, when you were in Form 1 those days, or G, uh, GSS 1 these days. Uh, you know the kind of authority you had. Whenever you saw the primary school children, when you went back home on holidays, uh, you kind of felt taller, and you felt higher, and you felt more important, and you carried yourself a particular way. But when you go back to school as a Form 1 a student, and then you see a Form 5 a student, that's another way you carry yourself. You understand? Your thought, your understanding about who you are affects your conduct, affects your character, affects the way you carry yourself, your comportment. And when you understand that the Lord has given you power, authority, dominion, and you walk anywhere, and you know that all the people around, whatever they have, magical power, evil power, occultic power, uh, witchcraft, or whatever it is, if you know who you are, the authority you have, the power you have, the dominion you have, there's a way you carry yourself, and there's a way you comport yourself, there is a way you move around, there's a way you even look around because of what you know you have. And I want to tell you, it doesn't take time. You can move from the dungeon, from the lowest level to the highest level in one single day. I'm going to show you now Genesis chapter 41. In Genesis chapter 41, you will see a promotion. And this promotion was not a gradual promotion. It was not a slow promotion. I'm talking about Joseph. Uh, for about uh, 13 years now, this young man, Joseph, had been at the lowest rung of the ladder. He wasn't at home. He had been sold into slavery. He had been sold into captivity. That's the way you comport yourself in a strange land where you don't have a voice, where you don't have any backing, where you don't have any supporter, where you don't have any lawyer, where your life is hanging 
in the hand of your master. There's a way you comport yourself. There is a way you feel on the inside. When somebody tells a lie against you, to the man in authority, and the man in authority did not allow you to even say a word, and you are cast into the prison. That is the way you feel when you are wearing those prison clothes. And even though you might be like uh, the prefect or whatever it is in that prison, but you are wearing prison clothes, that's the, place, that's the way you feel. And then, all of a sudden, he was taken out of the prison, and he was right in the palace. And I see you in the palace this morning. I see you in authority this morning. Now, he was taken out of being a warden. A, I don't know what they call them. And, uh, these people that lead the prisoners in the four walls of the prison captivity and the cage. He was taken out of that place and he came to rule over the nation. Like the prime minister, just at a moment of time, the change took place. The change that is taking place in you this morning will be so sudden and will be so wonderful that you will never know how could it have been. I thought it would take, what you thought will take months and years and decades. This morning, the Lord will promote you in Jesus' name. But you know, after the Lord has promoted you, you must not be thinking now and you must not be acting now as you were yesterday. Because yesterday, you must not be thinking to the prison. I'm talking about literally, literally, literally. Yesterday, just this last week, Joseph was in the prison. All of a sudden, they called him. And he shaved himself. And he changed his dressing. And he changed his attitude. And then he came as he came. And the discussion did not take a long time. Pharaoh told him the dream. And he said interpretation comes from God. And he told Pharaoh the interpretation. That did not take one hour at all. And then eventually, now Pharaoh said in chapter 41, chapter 41, I'm reading to you from verse 40. In verse 40, thou shalt be over my house. This is what they call authority. This is what is called dominion. According unto thy word shall all my people be ruled only in the throne will I be greater than thou? What he's saying is, I hold the title of the ruler. You do the function of the ruler. I delegate my authority. I delegate my power. I delegate my right unto you. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took up a string. That's the stamp of approval. And when any document was written at that time, and they wanted to show that it was coming from the palace, coming from the throne, they will put wax at the bottom part of it, and then they will put the stamp. And that stamp was engraved in the ring of the king. And so he gave him that stamp contained in the ring, or the ring, from his hand and put it upon Joseph's son and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen. Even the clothing changed. Yesterday, just this yesterday, he was in prison clothes. And today now, he is now in this fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him ride in the second chariot. He made him ride in the second chariot. And you will ride. I said you ride high. Which he had, and they cried before him, bowed in him. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. I'm looking for one man here now. I'm looking for Potiphar. That threw this Joseph into the prison. And said, my wife said that you attempted to rape her. Don't talk. Let me show you the way to where you will be. That's where you will spend the rest of your life. Go into the prison. Potiphar, where are you? The man that was your slave yesterday is now your ruler. 
the man that was that you gave appointment and you terminated his appointment now can be your employer and this man is now in authority over the whole of Egypt God is promoting you and all those instances, all those circumstances, all those people, sinners I'm talking about, that put you down, you will be above them. And then in verse 44, it says, And Pharaoh called Joseph's name, Sab -nap -pa -a -ne -a. If I didn't pronounce it like that, you won't get it. And he gave him to wife, uh, sorry, uh, that's verse 45. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh. Without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. That's authority. That's dominion. When the Lord tells you, you are the minister I recognize in that community. You are my man in that community. Any good thing taking place in that place... Anything that is, you, anything you desire in that place, I put you there. You are representing me there. And no man, no woman, no child will lift up their foot or their hand except at your commandment. No demon, no evil spirit, no familiar spirit will be able to do anything with members of your church except you allow it and you will not allow it the lord has given you authority and dominion and you have it already and you will exercise it the word of your mouth will be power the word of your mouth will carry something divine and something supernatural in jesus name three points to consider number one the meaning of authority and dominion we need to get the meaning the meaning of authority and dominion number two the manifestation of authority and dominion the manifestation of authority and dominion then number three ministers having authority and dominion are they here today ministers having authority and dominion let's go back to number one the meaning of authority and dominion we're looking at matthew chapter 8 verse 9 matthew chapter 8 verse 9 for i am a man under authority having soldiers under me you will see that the word under is used two times I am a man under authority. But that's not the end of the sentence. And I have soldiers under me. That's like you now. You are a man under the authority of the captain of our salvation. His name is Jesus. Jesus has authority over you. And because you have yielded to the authority of Jesus, the captain of your salvation, then you have authority over every other thing under you. Under you. You must link it up with what you learned yesterday. Because he has raised us up. That alone by itself shows that you have authority. There are some people, there are some things, there are some circumstances under you already. Because he has raised you up. The higher you go, the more things are under you, under your authority. And you're looking from above and you're looking down below. And you are together seated with Jesus Christ in heavenly places. If that is so, if someone is in heaven, all things on earth are under him. You cannot bring anything on earth above, higher than a man that is seated in heavenly places together with the Lord Jesus Christ. That means then, all the storms of life, all the difficulties in life, all the problems of life, and all the demons on earth, and all the sicknesses on earth, 
and everything you can think about that is on earth even the principalities and the powers in the air they're still under they are under the one that is seated in heavenly places in christ jesus i am a man under authority you are a man under the authority of jesus christ the captain of our salvation having soldiers under me and i say unto this man go and he goeth that's authority that's the meaning the meaning of authority is you have been given the chance the responsibility and the delegated power to be able to say go and nothing will go come and he cometh and to my servant do this and he doeth it that's authority look at acts of the apostles chapter 26 acts chapter 26 i'm reading to you from verse 10 acts 26 10 which thing i also did in jerusalem and many of the saints did i shut up in prison have been received authority that's it saul of tarsus said i did this in jerusalem what's the meaning of authority when you have authority you have delegated power to do something something that is within the confines of the paper of authority that you have and then he said many of the saints did i shut up in the prison and when you have authority you'll be able to shut the demons the evil spirits and the sicknesses in in the cage you'll be able to say this year in this my local church there will not be premature death and you shut up that premature death that is wanting to kill members in your church you shut it up and then it says it's because i received authority from the chief priest when they were put to death i gave my voice against them and it tells us in verse 11 it says and i punished them oft that means often in every synagogue and i compelled them to blaspheme being exceedingly mad against them i persecuted them even unto strange cities whereupon as i went to damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests and then the rest of the things followed anywhere he went please understand here now can you look up for a moment the location where he was did not matter as long as he carried that letter that's authority as long as he carried that letter of authority that letter of permission that authorized him to do what he, he wanted to do whether it was in jerusalem or it was in damascus or it was on the road that if anywhere i see anyone the way he thought at that time of this sect this is what i will do the location where you are does not matter whether you are in the east or in the west or in the north whether you are in nigeria or you're in west africa or you're in southern africa or east africa or indian ocean or you're in northern part of africa or beyond africa anywhere you are the authority you have the authority that you carry will work anywhere it tells us in matthew chapter 21 matthew chapter 21 the meaning of authority and uh, dominion chapter 21 verse 23 and when he was come into the temple the chief priests and elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said by what authority doest thou these things who gave thee this authority you understand the, the, uh, the pharisees the chief priests were not asking do you have authority no they could see the demonstration of the fact that they had authority 
They all, what they wanted to know is, what's the source of this authority? By what kind of authority is this? Because we've checked off from our records that this authority is not coming from the chief priests, it's not coming from the Sanhedrin, it's not coming from the religious council of the land. And yet we see you exercise authority. Chief priest, Sanhedrin, your own kind of authority does not heal the sick. Your own kind of authority does not cast out devils. There is authority that comes upon a man by giving him a title. But it is authority over the people that do not have a voice of their own. The authority that comes upon people by titles. That's so and so, they give him a great title. They give him a big title. And that authority is only over people. And it's negative. But the authority against the devil, against demons, against sicknesses, that's supernatural, that's spiritual, that's coming from the hand of the Heavenly Father, giving unto his favored son. And he wanted to know by what authority do you do these things? Who, by the way, gave you this authority? There's a lesson here to learn. Authority is given. It's conferred on you. And it, it, it doesn't go along with your feeling, no matter how you feel. It might even look small in stature. But the authority has been given unto you. And Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing. If ye tell me in the likewise, will I tell you by what authority I do these things. Jesus did not deny that he had authority. Yes, he had the authority. But he said, I'm only going to tell you, if you will tell me one thing that I'm going to ask you. We're looking at the meaning of authority. We'll look at the rest later. Then in John chapter 14. John chapter 14. I'm reading to you from verse 13 to start with. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. That's the authority. Is the power of attorney. Uh, that means then uh, the Lord Jesus Christ was simply saying uh, remember now the story of Joseph and Pharaoh only in the throne will I be higher than you are and whatever you say I have said it whatever you do I'm the one doing it whatever you do therefore here is the stamp of approval and you don't even have to be coming to me every day and every moment saying, can I do this? Can I do this? You are a man in authority. Use your authority. And Jesus said, I'm giving you something more than what Pharaoh gave to Joseph. I'm giving you my name. And that's the stamp of approval on earth and in heaven. And that name carries the same authority that I carry now. And that name carries the same power that I carry now. And I have all power, all authority on earth and in heaven. And this name represents that authority and that power. Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. In verse 14, if ye ask anything in my name, I will do it. That's the authority. That's the authority. In Esther chapter 8. Esther chapter 8. Reading from verse 8. We're looking at the meaning of authority. Esther chapter 8 verse 8. Write ye also for the Jews as it liketh you, as it pleases you. In the king's name and seal it with the king's ring. For the writing which is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's ring may no man reverse. You are learning something here. Authority. When that authority is given to you and you say that thing and you stamp it with the stamp of approval no man may reverse it do you know that this morning when you say something in the name of jesus 
And that thing is according to the promise of God in the Bible. Satan cannot reverse your word. Demons cannot reverse your word. And witches and wizards cannot reverse your words. Because it says, whatsoever is written in the king's name, name. And who is the highest king? King of kings and lord of lords. That's Jesus. And he gave you his name. And whatever is said, and whatever is written in the king's name. And sealed or the king's ring. And the blood of Jesus is more powerful than this as well as ring. And it says, and sealed with the king's ring. No man may reverse it. Then were the king's scribes called at that time in the third month. That is, in the month seven. In the three and twentieth day thereof. And it was written according to all that Mordecai commanded unto the Jews and to the lieutenants and to the deputies and the rulers of the provinces which are from India unto Ethiopia. See the extent of the authority and the power, delegated power of this man Mordecai. And it says, and 120 and seven provinces unto every province according to the writing thereof. Unto every people after their language. And the Jews according to the Jews according to their writing and according to their language. And he wrote in the king, in the king Ahasuerus' name. And sealed it with the king's ring. And he sent the letters by post on horsebacks and riders on mules and camels and young dromedaries wherein the king granted the Jews which were in every city to gather themselves together and to stand for their life to destroy and to slay and to cause to perish all the power of the people and the province that would assault them both little ones and women and to take the spoil of them for a prey upon one day in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, namely upon the all those uh, provinces upon the 13th, uh, the, the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Ada, the copy of the writing for the commandments to be given in every province was published unto all people that the Jews should be ready against that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. So the post that rode upon the mules and the camels went out, being hastened and pressed on by the king's commandment, and the decree was given at Shushan the palace. It became a decree, and the word of your mouth will be like a decree this morning. Now you understand the meaning of authority and dominion. Point number two, the manifestation of authority and dominion. The manifestation. Now you understand what authority is. And you know a person may have authority and never speak a word authoritatively. A person may have dominion and he may never act as a person that is victorious. A person that is more than a conqueror. You know, a person may have a real authority. And he maybe has some little, little things he's thinking about in his mind. And he forgets about his authority. He concentrates his life on non-essentials. And then he forgets the essential power, authority, strength, dominion, given unto him. That's the reason it's very important to think about it now that you know the meaning of authority. How about the manifestation of that authority and dominion. Mark chapter 1. In Mark chapter 1 verse 22. Mark 1 22. And they, and they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. He taught them as one that had authority. How did he manifest the authority? And they recognized it. And he didn't even have to announce to them, listen to me Pharisees, listen to me Sadducees, I have authority. 
No, he wasn't bragging about the authority. He just manifested it. In his teaching, they have said unto you, for many, many years, for thousands of years, this, this, and this. But I say unto you, authority. All this situation had been like this for these five years, seven years, ten years. But now, I say, this is how this thing is going to be, authority. In this family, we have been losing children. And in our extended family, we have been losing children. And in the uh, tribe, we have been losing children. But I just came to have understanding about my authority. In this family, I say and declare this year, no more premature death in Jesus' name. And it is sealed with the blood of Jesus. That's authority. Looks like since we got married, my wife has a good heart. And my wife really wants to do a lot of things for, for me and for the children. But it's like uh, the physical weakness has not allowed her to actually carry out everything she ought to carry out. Now, and it, it has continued on since all these years that we got married. But now I say, my wife will do everything she ought to do. Sickness, weakness, infirmity. I don't allow you now. I came from the, from the Congress with authority. Get out of this family and it is gone in Jesus' name. We've been uh, thinking about quite a lot of things in our family. And we thought by now our, uh, we should not be tenants in uh, somebody's house anymore. And these landlords, especially these unbelieving landlords, even some people that profess to be believers, they raise the rent the other time. And then he's coming out and saying, I give you only 15 days. And if you are not ready to pay this new amount, check out, pack out. We cannot continue to be like this. And we've been under this condition for a long time. Dribble like football here and there. But these landlords, I declare my wife, if we agree as touching anything, that we ask of the Father in the name of Jesus, he will give it to us. Is that right? I declare this very year, my wife and I, we're going to have our own house, bungalow, mansion, whatever it is. We're going to have it in Jesus' name. And you have got it. That's authority. The manifestation of authority. They said, they said, but I say unto you. And then the Lord confirmed it. Look at this now. In verse 23. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee? Thou Jesus of Nazareth. Stop. Think. Peter looked at John. And he said, What? I thought we were the only people that know that Jesus Christ, the Jesus of Nazareth, is the only one. Is the one that has power and authority. I thought because this was given to us by special revelation. Here we are in the synagogue. Look at this demon-possessed person. That Jesus had not even come near. And as Jesus was looking like this, the look from the face of Jesus Christ, the man began to cry out. I'm telling you, when witches see a man in authority, they will recognize you. When all those wizards, when they see a woman in authority, they will recognize you. And instead of you saying, which is, leave me alone. I've given my life to Jesus Christ. I am a child of God. And I've come out of your camp. All these secret calls. Leave me alone. Instead of you murmuring and complaining and crying and shouting and fasting and rolling on the ground and screaming. Leave me alone. You will not scream anymore. You will not shout anymore. But now, the screaming and the shouting and the fear is transferred to the witches and the wizards and to those evil spirits. And they are the people that will cry out, 
let us alone. What have we to do with thee? Thou Jesus of Nazareth, art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. They will recognize you in Jesus' name. And then Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace. That's authority. Hush. That's authority. Don't say another word. That's authority. You are in a place, and it looks like uh, there are evil spirits that uh, they are controlling your church. Anytime they want uh, anyone to backslide, you'll just hear that one of your key people has gone, is backsliding. And then another report comes and they say that a fellow, a trusted fellow, uh, the, the people that you lean upon, the people that you, you trust very much, you hear that that has happened again. And then you are diverted. Your attention is diverted and your mind is uh, kind of confused. It's like, what is all this? I'm just standing on the pulpit here. Uh, it's just like I'm preaching, but really, there's another spirit that is controlling in the congregation. But it should not be like that. You'll go back and you will say, hush, stop that. And you say that, I'm not talking about, you know, the pastors that come and they come to the pulpit and they see something there, they see something there, they see something there, and they're not manifesting spiritual authority. This is just, you know, their normal self and their aggressive nature. And they say, everybody, I'm the pastor here, sit down. You know, sometimes we do that, but that's not the kind I'm talking about. That one is just the normal, military, aggressive style that some of us pastors use once in a while. I'm talking of the spiritual authority. That no matter who those people are, and no matter what they're trying to do behind the scene, you come as a person that is appointed of God in that place. And you say, hold your peace and do not touch these members of the church anymore and it will be confirmed in jesus name here we are told jesus rebuked him saying hold thy peace and come out of him and when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice he came out of him that's authority the evil spirit had no choice it had to come out and now that the lord gives you this authority in the name of jesus sealed with the blood of jesus when you declare that authority and you pronounce that word of authority against sickness against infirmity that sickness and infirmity and disease and evil power will leave that place in jesus name and it says in verse 27, and they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority, he commanded even the unclean spirits and they do what? Tell me out loud. They do obey him. That is the manifestation of authority and dominion in luke chapter 4 luke chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 32 and they were astonished at his doctrine for his word was with power they were astonished at his doctrine because his word was with power you know as it came to them they felt the power they felt the conviction. It, they felt it was as if as the words of Jesus came to them, there was something moving within them, rising within them. There was a conviction within them. And there was something telling them, this is a word you must do something about. It affected men. It affected demons. It affected circumstances. It affected sicknesses. His word was with power affecting everything in every area of life. That is the manifestation of authority. Then in verse 3, it says, And in the synagogue there was a man which had an unclean spirit, an unclean devil, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. 
what have we to do with thee thou jesus of nazareth that thou come to destroy us i know thee who thou art the holy one of god and jesus rebuked him saying hold thy peace come out of him when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not they are not it dare not hurt him hurt him not how could he and they were all amazed and speak among themselves saying what a watch is this when you go back home and you go back to your local church you go back to your state you go back to your region you go back to your nation and now you speak what's authority maybe you've been cringing before you've been very apologetic before and inside in the corner of your heart whenever there is uh, a problem of a demonic issue to deal with in the corner of your heart you're saying uh, how is it they are bringing a problem like this i wish a problem like this did not come and then you look around it's uh, brother so and so there because he's um, you know one of these devil chasers and demon chasers and uh, and I know he could have, I could have just said, uh, I, I need to prepare an outline now of the Bible. So I need to do something very urgent. Now I would have dealt with this matter, but uh, brother so and so, uh, please go and deal with this. Uh, uh, brethren, I hope you understand because I'm very, very busy now. Because if I don't do this now for the service on Sunday, everybody will be waiting. You understand? Yes, we understand. And then, brother, I know you can do it. Uh, God bless you. Let me hear the result after. You, you understand what I'm saying? And it is not that my brother is busy. It's because this case, uh, I don't want them to get me into trouble. But when you have the authority, and you have it now, I say you have it now, you will not be transferring those cases to anybody anytime they come. From any direction they are coming, you'll say, bring them here. Even if you have something else to do, you say, I want to push that aside. I want to see, and I want to see the evidence of a manifestation of the authority and I got in the, that I got in the Congress. And then you say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, before I finish my sentence, come out of him. And it is out in Jesus' name that's authority that's authority and then they said what a word is this for with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits and they come out they come out of them in first kings chapter 17 first kings chapter 17 i'm reading verse 1 the manifestation of authority it says, and Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, Elijah, the prophet of God, Elijah, the highest spiritual man in the nation, said unto Ahab, the highest political man in the nation, high position high authority you know the lord has placed you where you are in the spiritual realm and the lord has placed the other people in their various areas they have their position you have your position and who is greater in israel ahab or elijah tell me saul or samuel Nebuchadnezzar or Daniel Herod or Christ Nero or Paul why don't you then realize that whoever those other people are and whatever authority they have political authority and any other kind of authority they have why don't you understand that the Lord has placed you in that place so that when it comes to your turn and you are to manifest the authority you need to manifest, you will not allow the Ahab of the land to be in control and to be in authority and to overpower and to overrule the plan of God for that nation and the plan of God in the ministry of Elijah. 
How is it the Elijahs of our time, the Elijahs of our day, the Elijahs of each of the countries you, you come from, you allow the Ahab and the Jezebel and the witchcraft and everything negative of the land to be in control. But when the Lord gives you authority, here Elijah came and he said, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Ahab, I announce that to you. See if you can change that. That's authority. That's the manifestation of the authority that is given to that man of God. In Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 12. In Mark 11, reading from verse 12 through to verse 14. Mark 11 verse 12. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry, and seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if haply he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples had it. Now we've been talking about the manifestation of authority. And Jesus Christ manifested authority over evil spirits. Well, you say those are kind of intelligent beings. What I mean by that, they could hear, they could understand, they could appreciate, and they could recognize. Because they recognize the Lord Jesus Christ, you see, they could hear. Because they could speak, after all. But this one, this is having authority over inanimate objects. This is a tree. That cannot even hear anything. And yet, the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ was not limited to evil spirits, against evil spirits, over evil spirits, but even the lifeless tree. And it says, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter, even forever. And the disciples heard that. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, it says, And in the morning, the following morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Give me a good amen. amen. You know, every plant the Heavenly Father has not planted in your life, in your family, in your ministry. I speak that same word of authority this morning against that evil plant in your family. It is rooted out in Jesus' name. And Peter calling to remember says unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. Just yesterday we heard you when you said that. And we said, John, did you hear that? James, did you hear that? And I heard, but it appeared nothing has happened. And Jesus did not even look back to see whether anything has happened. Because you know that when you have authority and you declare that word of authority, you are not looking back, you are not looking around whether your word has been carried out or not. You just know it's going to be done. The devil has no choice. That situation has no choice. And the circumstances, they have no choice. It has to be carried out. It has to be done. And then the following morning, they saw that and Peter said, look, what did the tree you caused yesterday is withered away. And Jesus answering says unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, That whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed. You've had this before. You've had this before. Have you ever done it? And you can do it. And you will do it. But my question is, when are you going to do it? The mountain disturbing your life. The mountain disturbing your ministry. Shake it off. 
you're a minister, you're a preacher. And all you're saying is, how is the ministry becoming more difficult for me? How is preaching becoming more difficult for me? How is leadership becoming more difficult for me? How is it that, you know, I, I enjoy the, my ministry 10 years ago, 15 years ago. How is it, why is it like this today? There's a mountain. Hindering your progress in that ministry. And instead of why? Why? How? What? What's the problem? Instead of wondering, what's the problem? Speak the word, the word of authority. Because it says, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea. The Lord Jesus said that he will have what he says. If you believe in your heart, then the things that you said will come to pass, they will come to pass, and he shall have whatsoever he says. As ministers of the gospel, we're going back to our churches, and we're no more grumbling and complaining. And we're no more relying on people that do not have the authority and the power. You know, a pastor, you know, a leader, you know, when he's fed up, he'll call, brother, come. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Are you thinking about what I'm thinking about? Well, I am trying my best. I want to be your pastor. I want to teach you. I want to have programs. But I cannot have the programs. Because of this. Because of this. Because of this. Do you see the mountain there? Do you see that mountain of financial need there? Do you see the mountain of uh, you know, difficulties there? Uh, uh, we should have made progress more than this. We should have gone to the other side by this time now. Why if not for my brother? What can we do? Why are you asking him? You see the authority that you have? Don't you have the word of authority in your mouth? And can't you speak that word of authority and say, in the name of Jesus, the one that appointed you here as a leader, as a pastor, this mountain, I command you, get out in Jesus' name, and it is gone in Jesus' name. You go to your various churches, and you go to your various regions, and you go to your various nations and states, and you stand in the authority that the Almighty God, through the name of Jesus and the seal of the blood of the Lamb, has given you, and you say, by the grace of God, this will be done, this will be done, that will be done in this church. And it is confirmed, it will be done in Jesus' name. Give me a good, good, good amen. Because, you know, no mountain of difficulty, no mountain engineered or planted by the devil should in any case in any way hinder the progress of the man of god or the woman of god that has got authority from the lord jesus christ directly that's why it says in verse 24 therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire do you desire anything for yourself for your husband for your wife for your children, for your family, for your ministry, whatsoever, what things soever. Ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them. Tell me the rest. Tell me out loud. Use a preacher's voice to tell me. Ah, you know how preachers talk, and ye shall have them. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Reading from verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. In Ecclesiastes, 
you're talking about the manifestation of the authority and the dominion that is given to the man of God, that is given to the child of God. And, and, and you have to speak the word, the word of authority, because if you don't say it, it will not come to pass. The mountain will just remain there. The difficulty will just remain there if you don't make use of the word, the word of authority, and stand up, and stand straight, and stand firm to the calling that the Lord had given you. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. Where the word of a king is, there is what? Power. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? Number one, the meaning of authority and dominion. Number two, the manifestation of authority and dominion. Number three, ministers having authority and dominion. Ministers having authority and dominion. In Luke chapter 9, Luke chapter 9, look at this. Luke chapter 9, reading from verse 1. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together. And he gave them power and authority over all devils to, and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He gave them power. Now, uh, do you see the words, the verbs are very important. And as you look at the verbs in verse 1, called them together. As he has called us together in this Congress. And he gave them. He gave them. Do you see something here? Then in verse 2, after he gave them the authority. And the power. Now he sent them. You understand then the purpose of the Lord and the plan of the Lord. If he gives you the authority, when he gives you the authority, he sends you out to go and demonstrate and to go and manifest that authority. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. It tells us then in Matthew chapter 18 verse 18. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. Ministers having authority and dominion. Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. A good amen. Here is authority delegated and committed and conferred upon the disciples. And what he gave them, he has given to us. Because Peter is not here to do the work I'm supposed to do. And Paul is not there in your location to do the work you are supposed to do. He gave them the tools that will accomplish, that will do, that will effect everything he had called them to do. And he's giving you the same tool, the same instrument, the same power, and the same authority and dominion to be able to do what you are called to do. And then he said in verse 19 again, I say unto you, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they, ask, that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven you know the devil uh, as uh, the devil is very clever crafty cunning and the devil has cheated many people in many many ways they do not understand let me look up here here we are in this congress you come from your region he comes from his region he comes from his state you come from your state he comes from the nation you come from another nation and as uh, we come here, two of us, I coming from my own region, he coming from his own nation, and we're friends, we know one another. How are you, brother? Oh, how are you, brother? That's everything, everything is fine. Okay, no discussion now. I, there's something I have going on in my region. 
you say so. There's something also I have in my nation. In fact, I would like to really solve this problem. This new year, I don't want this problem to confront my nation anymore. I don't want this problem to confront my locality anymore. What is it? And then you say yours and I say mine. Now, Jesus Christ said, if two of us shall agree as touching anything that we ask of the Father, he will do it for us. And there, two by two, two by two, think about it. All of us who are here, all of us who are here, if we pair up two by two, two by two, you'll pair up and you'll have thousands and thousands and thousands of pairs. And these two people are agreeing on a problem in my region, on a problem in his own state. And these other two people are agreeing on a problem in this locality, on a problem in that locality. And these other two people are agreeing, this mountain must go, this difficulty must go, and these challenges that are confronting you in ministry, everything must vanish away. If we will do that, the devil will not be cheating us anymore. But you know, we come to a congress like this, and instead of taking those problems unto the Lord in prayer, we're busy talking about non-essentials what did we eat yesterday morning that's a non-essential did you get water to bath uh, you know last night because you know when i'm at home i bath in the morning i bath in the i bath in the evening did you get water last last night that's a non-essential in fact i don't understand i normally take a balanced diet and when i eat a rice once i want to eat another thing and how can somebody eat without having fruit on top of that that's a non-essential and you understand do you understand how the things have been going on in fact uh, they, they chose uh, the choir in uh, you know that other state what happened they didn't choose the choir in my own state that's a non-essential how do we allow the devil to cheat us and we come over here and this multitude of people and this multitude of leaders and we can take africa for the lord jesus christ and we can take your country for the lord jesus christ if we will stand to it to our authority and leave all the non-essentials and shed up the non-essentials and stop talking about the non-essentials and stop thinking about the non-essentials and come together and say there is something essential for my ministry there is something essential for my personal life there's something essential for my family and i want you to agree with me because jesus christ said whosoever whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything they shall ask of my father it shall be done for them of my father which is in heaven give me a good amen it will be done in jesus name you know when you as a minister of god you'll just begin before you say a word you want to ask yourself is that an essential matter or a non-essential because my life is short the time i have is short and the responsibility is great i want to concentrate on the really 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 essential things i don't want to take up my time with non-essentials. I don't want to talk about non-essentials. I don't want to relate with non-essentials. And I want to get another serious-minded brother. I want to get another serious-minded minister. And I want us to always agree, agree, this is the essential thing, essential in the ministry. And we're going to be in agreement. And we're going to confront the enemy. And we're going to confront every problem. And as we come together in that authority and in that dominion, whatever we say is transformed into a decree. And it shall be done in Jesus' name. In Job chapter 22. Job chapter 22. It tells us in verse 27, Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee. This morning the Lord will hear you. And thou shalt pay thy vows. Thou shalt also, what's the next word? Thou shalt also, tell me, thou shalt also. Now, how many times are you going to be pleading? Why, why am I sick? Why am I having this problem? Decree. Stand up and talk in your authority. Know that the Lord has appointed you. 
and at all this sin should not be bothering your life. Thou shalt also decree a sin, and it shall be established unto thee, and thy light shall shine, the light shall shine upon thy ways. Obscurity is taken away from you. Darkness is taken away from you. Weakness is taken away from you. Unanswered prayer is now a sin of the past. Today, you will decree a sin and the Lord will establish it in Jesus' name. Are you ready to decree? If you are not ready, don't stand up here. Don't stand up yet. If you are not ready, you make up your mind. You say, when there is authority and a manifestation of authority, we must know when that authority is manifested, this particular problem, this particular situation, this particular mountain in my life, in my family, in my ministry, it must go. I will decree a thing. Authority. You have authority. You have dominion in Christ. Exercise that authority right now. The authority of a minister. The Lord has called you. And the Lord has appointed you. And the Lord has given you this authority. Exercise it. Manifest it. That means you speak a word. And nobody can contradict it. You speak the word of authority and the word of power. And nobody will be able to say, What sayest thou there? What doest thou there? You carry yourself in line with the authority the Lord has given you. You comport yourself, you conduct yourself in the authority that the Lord has given unto you. Concentrate on the essential thing. Brush out and brush away from you every non essential authority, authority, authority and power that the devil will not just be using your life the way he wants, bring sickness whenever he wants, brings weakness whenever he wants, and brings discouragement whenever he wants, you stand to your authority at your right. You have dominion in Christ. The name of Jesus has been given unto you. Stand in that authority. The devil has no right to torment your life. Stand in your authority. Don't be apologetic to the devil. Don't be apologetic to the demons. Don't be apologetic to evil spirits and familiar spirits. The Lord has called you. Stand in your calling. You may be young. You may be older. You may be a sister. You may be a brother. Stand in your authority. The weapon of our warfare is not carnal. My brother, the Lord has placed you in that place. You have control. You have control. You have control over the programs. You have control over everything that happens in that place. Don't complain again. The devil is hindering me. The devil cannot hinder you. Evil spirits are hindering me. Evil spirits cannot hinder you. The witches and the wizards, they don't want the gospel in this place. Who are they? Stand in your authority. There is a spirit in this place. Territorial spirit. And they do not want the gospel to take root. Don't say that again. The territorial spirits are not the one in authority in that territory. You, the, the Joshua of God for the occasion. You, the Elijah of God for this occasion. You, the Elisha of God for this occasion. You, the Daniel of God in this Babylon. You are the one that has the authority. Stand to your authority and declare here is what will take place and it will be done. You are the man in authority there. You are the woman in authority there. Nothing will contradict your word when you speak that word of authority in that location. This locality is a stronghold of this particular thing, of this particular spirit, of this particular ideology, and it looks like there's nothing we can do in this area. There is something you can do there. Manifest your authority. Manifest your dominion. Let the word of authority and decree come out of your mouth, and it shall be done. There are a lot of things I want to do, but I'm weak. 
There are a lot of things I want to do, but I'm sick. But there are a lot of things I want to do, but there's no money. Don't say that again. Manifest your authority. Command that money to come into that region. And command the workers to come into that region. And command the resources to come into that region. And command that sickness and weakness out of your life, out of your body. And stand up erect and firm in the power, in the authority the Lord has given you. You are the man. You are the woman in authority. In that place, you will do well. You will do good. And the work of God will prosper in your hand. In that place, the Lord has appointed you. You will do what he has called you to do in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray my brother my sister what do you have tell me out loud what do you have tell me again what do you have who is in authority in your location which is or yourself who is in authority satan or yourself the false prophets or yourself catholicism or yourself religion or yourself who is in authority the familiar spirits or yourself who is greater elijah or ahab who is greater daniel or nebuchadnezzar who is greater yourself and the leader of the occultic people in that your location who has a final word in your region who has a final word in your country who has a final word in your church raise up that hand up an or anointed hand the lord has put his anointing upon you and the Lord has called you and the Lord has chosen you and the Lord has lifted you up and the Lord has given you authority and the Lord has given you dominion you are up, you are up you are up, you will not come down you will not come down you will not come down Satan will not bring you down evil spirit will not bring you down circumstances will not bring you down the Lord is sending you out where you come from you are the Elijah there you are the Joshua there. You are the Daniel there. You will not take your problems to them. You will solve your own problem while you are standing in authority. They will bring their problems to you. You will not cry in front of the enemy. They will cry before you. You will not complain of the power of the enemy. They will complain and they will bow and bend and lie on the ground because of your authority. There is a difference today. Just in one single day, Joseph came out of the prison and came to the palace. This single day, you have come up. Never to go down again. When they brought Joseph to the palace and gave him authority, did they demote him anytime? Nobody will demote you. Nobody will bring you down. Your direction of movement is up, not down. Progress, not failure. Success, not defeat. Victory is for you every time. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come on behalf of every brother, every sister, and I come on behalf of every minister here. Put your anointing upon them in Jesus' name. Lord, you have given us already, everyone, the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, the reality, the understanding, the, exp the experience of using that name effectively in our personal lives, in our family lives, in our ministerial lives. Grant unto everyone in Jesus' name. I pray that your power will be like a great dynamite in every heart, in every life, in every ministry represented here in Jesus' name. From now on, every brother here, every sister here, they'll be in charge in their place. The devil will not take their right, authority, dominion away from them. Evil spirits, demonic spirits will not be in control when they are in charge. They will be in authority in Jesus' name. I pray that the anointing of the Lord will multiply in your life.
the power of the Holy Ghost will live big in your life in Jesus' name. And if there is any sickness there in your body, any weakness, any infirmity there, anything that looks incurable there, I command right now. Come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for every minister here, every brother, every sister here, whatever has been slowing down the work of the Lord in the hand, finance, building, and workers and people, I pray. All the resources they need, you will grant unto them in Jesus' name. And I pray that the word of God in their mouth will be a decree that Satan cannot change, that evil spirit cannot change, that evil powers cannot change, but they will be in control, in authority, in dominion, everywhere there, in Jesus' name. Confirm it, O Lord. I will pray that this year will be a year of progress for everyone. A year of progress in ministry. Progress in the family. Progress in their personal lives. And every good thing they have in their hearts to do, you will help them and give them all that is necessary to get it done in Jesus' name. You are blessed and nobody will reverse your blessing. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say good amen. A good amen. Yes, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe.